Hello traders, today is day number 61 of small cap market open trading. We did take two trades today on ASTS. I'm gonna show you those in just a moment. They did both fail and there's a reason why we didn't take a third trade. It was all within our plan, I'll explain that. And it saved us from taking one more minus one R loss on the day. So the lesson today is going to be why you stick to your plan and why it's so important to track your trades with good data. I'm going to show you something very specific on the spreadsheet toward the end of the video that will make it clear why it's so helpful to track the data and do it accurately. So this is the live video. I'm going to post this on its entirety with my commentary on Patreon. And if you're interested in that, that's at patreon.com slash trading armor. So here you can see right at the beginning of the day, it was 9.30 a.m. ASTS is one of the first stocks that I pulled up. But notice on the daily chart that the price is trading below the 200 MA. So that does not meet our daily chart criteria. So we just would not trade something like that. But what happened throughout the day, there's a ton of stuff on the screener here. None of it looked good on the daily chart. All of it was trading, excuse me, below the 200 MA on the daily chart. And ASTS eventually broke out above the 200 MA. So that's what this purple line is. So now we have ASTS up on the big chart. And let me uh, explain these levels here. So this first yellow line is the previous high of day. So you can see that broken out on this candle. This is the first high, sorry, previous high of uh, the previous session. That could be the pre-market, aftermarket, previous day. And then this second yellow line is the first high of day after breaking over that level. It all happened on one candle. That happened sometimes. This purple line is where the 200 MA is on the daily chart. It's at 959. So uh, that level needs to be broken before I can take a trade because that's part of my criteria in the trading plan is that the price must be trading above the 200 MA. So Let's see what happens. We're going to fast forward. This took a long time to play out. We just kept our eye on the screener looking for uh, anything else that might pop up, but nothing else did. And then you could see, let me show you that in real time. Um, when, now it's around 1015. We can trade till 1030. That's what our plan says. And that's very strict. It's not around 1030. It's not 1031, 1032. At 1030, I have my alarm set on my phone. And if I haven't taken any trades, by the time that alarm goes off, then I stop trading. Or even if I've taken two trades and my third trade's about to come up, I uh, stop trading. So now we're seeing the one minute candle. That's just me going through, kind of muting on and off um, on the Patreon video. So you see the one minute candle break through that 200 MA very strongly, by the way. It doesn't just kind of go up, tap it, and come back down. And then that establishes our second high of day. So now once that happens, we have to get in on the first one minute candle that makes a new high after a pullback from that level. So that's what I'm waiting for here. And we end up getting our ideal entry, I believe, or one cent below our ideal entry. So I just realized at this moment, I didn't have my calculator up, but I'm just trying to show you live because uh, it's coming up here pretty soon, the entry. Okay, so obviously, um, well, here's the thing. Uh, you might argue like, well, I had that stuff covering the screen. I could have missed the entry, but that couldn't have happened because if this candle made a new high, it was going to just move this white line up. That would not have been my entry. So just wanted to make that clear. But that is something you have to be very careful with. So now we can be triggered for an entry as soon as a one minute candle makes a new high over the high of this candle, which I believe the high of that candle is 959. So I'm looking for 960 or better. Oh, actually it's nine, uh, might be 960, not sure. All right, so there we go. I just got triggered. I hit my hotkeys. I got 959. I believe I wanted 960. So nearly an ideal entry. Now this is the really um, dangerous thing is you have to get that stop loss in place very quickly. Look how quickly this thing reversed and started to flush down. So this could have been really bad. It could have gone down, you know, 10, 20, 30 cents below my stop loss. So always make that a priority to get that stop loss in place very quickly. And I was a little bit slow in this case because I'm trying to add commentary uh, when I'm making the Patreon video. But uh, I did get it up there in time. 
that's so important because imagine if you're trading full position size right now we're just trading one single share and we're just test trading but if you're trading full position size and you get flushed on like that that could be a really uh, big mess so now we're using our XR calculator it gives us our 2R profit target which is 1005 and then the trade is all done all I have to do is just sit here and wait and let it play out doesn't even matter if I sit here and watch it or I go do something else these orders are in place and if the prices get hit they should get triggered now there was something very interesting that in all of my two years or so of trading with Weeble I've never seen this happen yet and I'm still not quite sure what happened but it all worked out just fine in the end and you'll see the price come down and I think it goes to about 934 but it does so in a split second and does not trigger our stop loss here comes watch there you saw that so either that's a graphical error where that the price never really came down that low it's at 935 or it was um, so quick that there were not enough orders to fill me on the stop loss and I've heard of that happening um, the stop loss is a market order so if the price continued to go lower it should fill at some point um, but anyway that's the very first time I've, ha I've ever had that happen and since these bracket orders are out there and the trade could still work out you just stay in the trade because you know there's nothing nothing to have like let's say something really weird happened where the price kept going lower and you're not getting filled then you would have to get out somehow um, but I would assume that this would have been filled if the price continued to go lower and in fact it does end up stopping me out on this trade and you'll see that in just a moment let me just try to fast forward to it to save us some time all right so let's see there it is right there so I'm gonna back up so you can see that live there it goes so now you saw it come down and fill us right away and we got filled on the penny exactly where we wanted to so we took the exact loss that we wanted to take uh, which is nice on this we did get stopped out on the second trade on that one we took two cents slippage which again is not bad uh, considering the volatility of a stock like this so hard stops work um, you see how how low this thing went so uh, it it would have been easy to get um, to lose a lot more money on that stop so anyway let me just show you the second entry all right so it, it looks like it was kind of off screen there or something I guess the video um, the video recorder wasn't didn't catch it or something let's see because I'm marking out my moment of weakness here okay here it comes it's on I think it's on this candle yeah there it is right there I'm triggered to take the entry I almost missed it again I'm just not as quick when I'm making the commentary live on the video but I did get my uh, exact fill that I wanted I wanted 953 and I got that and now we're just using that XR calculator our profit target is 999 and this one this is a very frustrating trade but this is a good test of your discipline because discipline is all that matters if you have a profitable plan that you've proven profitable you've tested it and you can't follow it you break the plan then it doesn't matter how profitable that plan is you're not going to be green in the long run it's just not possible so the most important thing is to always be able to follow your plan no matter what happens so our plan says that we have our stop loss and our profit target in the appropriate place and we just let the trade play out no matter what happens so you're going to see the price pop up and look at that it goes up just within uh, four cents I'll show you that live because this thing just pops up like crazy there we go 989 and you're going to see 990 and then on the next candle goes all the way to 995 and our profit target is at 999 so if you're a new trader you're not disciplined it's very likely you're going to pull that profit target down but that is going to totally destroy all of your statistics if I recorded this as a winning trade it would mean absolutely nothing on my spreadsheet because my spreadsheet is only collecting data for trades that go to 2R or more that's it so if I start throwing winners on there that are less than 2R and adding that to my win rate it's going to totally destroy all of my statistics so the most important thing is not whether you made it whether you uh, ended green or red it's whether or not you did what your plan says to do so that your data actually means something at the end of your test so after today we have 74 trades 
We've done everything right. There's two error trades that were totally inadvertent, and I've recorded those as error trades on the spreadsheet. But other than that, all of our data is clean because we've stuck to the plan since day one of uh, test trading. So when I tell you, you know, this, this trade has a 52% chance of working out, it actually means something. And uh, and that and that's exactly what this trade does have. Uh, the probability of it working out is 52%. That means there's a 48% chance that it's going to fail. So if you get stopped out, you really shouldn't be surprised. Now the key there is that with a 2R profit target, you only need a 33% win rate to be profitable. So 52% is very profitable. With a 3R uh, profit target, you only need a 25% win rate to be profitable. So 52% is extremely profitable. So we're not worried about whether we win or lose this trade because we already know, so far at least, after 74 trades, that this works out in the long run. And that's what we're concerned with, and we're not concerned with uh, each individual trade. Now, while we're talking about the spreadsheet and the statistics, the other thing that is so important is tracking any little details that were maybe slightly weird about the trade. For example, on this trade, this was unusual because it was trading below the 200 MA for most of the day, and then it finally broke up, broke out over the 200 MA during our setup. So that is a very important piece of data to collect, and I'm gonna show you on the spreadsheet where I collect that data, and is this a trade that I should have avoided because of that fact? And we'll answer that question in just a moment as soon as we show this getting stopped out live. Let me just fast forward here. Oh, and one other very cool thing before we jump to the spreadsheet. So we get stopped out in this trade. This is only trade number two. So theoretically, we have a third trade that we can take because that's what our plan tells us. We could take up to three trades. Notice the time when this uh, kind of track bar goes away. It's 1027. I am allowed to trade till 1030 and that's it. That's based on the trading plan and there's so many reasons why that's important. It's important to have a cutoff time that you feel is appropriate and then stick to that cutoff time. Otherwise, things can get out of control so easily. So 1030 is the limit and notice the time down at the lower right hand corner, 1028 right now. So I need to be triggered on the next two candles to get in and if I'm not, then I can't take a trade even if the candle after that triggers me. So look at the high of this candle that I was hovering over. It was 952. So if I see 953 or more, I have to get in. That doesn't happen. Let me see if I could fast forward a little bit to save us some time. Okay. Now, if the next candle triggers, then I do have to get in. And let's see the high of this candle. I'm going to hover over it in just a moment. Where is it? 944. So if I see 945 or more on this candle, I have to get in and that'll be trade number three. But if I don't see that, I think at 945 or more. If I don't see that in this price bubble, then I don't take a trade. So watch how close it gets to triggering us. There's 942. There's only uh, 40 seconds left in my trading day. Let me fast forward just a little bit. Okay, only eight seconds left, and then now we're done. We're done because this is the 1030 candle right here. So that is too late to take an entry, even though that's our trigger right there. This was the absolute last candle that we could have gotten in on, and that's based off the plan. Now, the next thing I do, I don't recommend doing because it's going to totally mess with your psychology, but I just did it for you guys, is I showed, okay, well, what if I would have gotten into that trade? What would have happened? And I guarantee you it could have gone either way. It could have hit my 2R profit target. It could have stopped me out, but let's see what it did, and this is just for fun. But I'll just, this is an example. It's only one example, so it's not like establishing a rule here, but it's showing you that following your plan can and usually does save you money. Excuse me. <clears throat> so here's where my stop loss would be. And then if I would have gotten my ideal entry, it would have been one cent above this candle. So we're putting that out. So this is the absolute best case scenario of this trade is getting in here at 9.43 and getting my, or putting my stop loss at 9.22. And then again, you can use my 2R calculator to get my profit target. In just a moment, we'll look at the spreadsheet, by the way, but let's just watch this really quick. So here is my profit target, 9.85. So I'm going to put a line up on the chart for the 9.85. There it is. And let's see what happens. This would, would would have been trade number three had this happened before 1030. But since it, it happened after 1030, that's past the cutoff point and 
I just show you here at the end. I'm trying to get it. There's just a few seconds left. It does stop us out. It doesn't really matter, I guess, if it... Let me show you. I'll show you on the live chart. Yeah, I guess I didn't record it, but I can show you on the live chart that it does stop us out. So where are we at? Yeah, so there you go. So here is that trade we were looking at, that kind of theoretical trade, and then it stopped us out right there. And it never went to that to our profit target. It's up here at 985. So this thing has gotten weak. And it may reverse. It may go up. It may hit that 999 profit target. It may hit the over $10 profit target. But it just doesn't matter how many uh, extra trades are you willing to lose. You would have been triggered again here. And you would have been stopped out over here. You would have been triggered again here. And you would have been stopped out over here. So that's the importance of having the cutoff and having that criteria in the plan. Because you can't just keep trying and hoping that eventually you catch that reversal. I mean, where do you stop? And even if you caught like a 3R trade at this point, you're not going to make back up those losses. So it's better just to walk away. Today we were down minus 2R. Let me show you the spreadsheet. And I'll show you the important piece of data that I collected. So ASTS was initially under the daily 200 MA, but broke out above it before we were triggered. And we ended up taking a minus two hour loss on that. So do you think maybe that's something we should just avoid in the future? Well, let the data tell us that. And again, I don't have that much data on that statistic, but I do have uh, something from near the beginning of this uh, test trading. Here's a stock that broke above. This is the only other time a stock broke above the 200, 200 MA during our setup. And we took a trade and this stock went to 3R on the third trade. So if we were holding the 3R, this is about, you know, now, you know, we're holding the 2R, but we're tracking that 3R data. If we were holding the 3R, even though the first two trades failed, we still would have ended up green on the day plus 1R. So that's just one example of where we took a trade. Uh, and it's the only other example that I have on this spreadsheet, but that's the data, you know, that you want to be tracking because over time, maybe after... 50 trades or so, you could start to come up with an idea. Is it worth taking a trade on a stock that started out below the 200 MA, but eventually crossed it during your setup? So that's something that we're going to be looking at long term. So anyway, you know, what kind of impact did these two losses have on our data? Not much at all, because now we're 74 trades into this thing. We're still profitable, even for our uh, two hour profit target, which needs a win rate of 33% to break even. Anything over that is profitable. Yeah, we're just near break even on it. We're about up 3R, but notice this is the big number is if we're holding till 3R, we were up 16R. And again, if we skip that first trade, which we're kind of debating right now, uh, if we skip that first trade and we hold to 3R, we'd be up 19R. Or if we're holding to 2R, we'd be up 14R. So we're tracking all of that data right now. And we only have 26 more trades to take before we conclude this test and come up with a finalized plan. So this video had a lot of information in it and uh, hopefully, hopefully it was helpful to you. If you didn't understand any of it, let me know in the comment section below. Again, there's a lot more information on my Patreon every single live trade day. Uh, well, at least the ones that, that I find worthy of posting. There's losses, there's wins, there's all kinds of stuff, worst case scenario days on there. So it's not just the good trades or the trades that work out. But um, so there's lots of live trade videos on there and I'm adding more all the time. There's my trading plan written in detail and there's my spreadsheets, my calculators, all that stuff is on patreon.com slash trading armor. And thank you to all of those who have been um, becoming patrons and supporting me and using the tools to become better traders because that's what it's all about. We all want to become better traders and we want to keep from blowing up our accounts. And that's really important. If you do this and you just trade one single share at a time, I guarantee you're not going to blow up your account, uh, especially if you limit yourself to three trades a day. Of course, you could trade one single share and take, you know, 50 or 100 trades a day and still blow up your account. So it's all about the details. Anyway, as always, go into every single trade with a plan. Stick to that plan no matter what. Always take your stop losses, honor your profit target, and in the long run, you should be green. Take care.